What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. Now, do you like money? Because I like money. Everybody likes money. You want your chance to win some free money or some free prizes? Go ahead and enter Treeb Talks AAF Weekly Picks over on Facebook, or you can comment your picks down below. You have to pick throughout the AAF regular season. I know one week has gone by, but if you still have not been able to enter the contest and you wish to, you are still able to ladies and gentlemen the prizes are either a hundred dollars via the cash app a hundred dollar amazon gift card or a brand new pair of apple airpods all you have to do is pick every aaf game of the week tell me the total points that you think a certain game will score uh that i have already set up that game is going to be the commanders against the apollos so ladies and gentlemen make sure that you pick the total amount of points you think will be scored in that one so you have a chance to win so ladies and gentlemen without further ado let's get this video started so welcome to the newest series here on the channel for you aaf fans the alliance i'm just gonna start calling it because i rewatched my last video and when you say aaf a certain amount of times it sure as hell seems to get really awkward so the alliance players of the week so how i'm going to do this i'm going to break it down obviously from offense and defense on the offensive side of the ball we're going to be picking a quarterback a running back and a wide receiver for the offensive players of the week as for the defense that one's more fair game um on defense you just have to have you just have to have a solid weeks of play in order to make the uh best defensive players of the week i will also be picking three of those guys so ladies and gentlemen without further ado this is the alliance offensive and defensive players of the week okay so first things first we're going to start off with the offensive mvps and we're going to be starting off with the running back the running back that i have decided to give the offensive player of the week to this week is a running back for the orlando apollos that has a ton of nfl experience and he should have uh not got kicked off the kansas city chiefs but the cleveland browns have now solidified him at their new franchise running back to get the big middle finger to nick chubb i'm talking about the orlando apollo's former running back kareem hunt kareem hunt had 75 rushing at what 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 oh got a note from the producer what does it say Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just going to cut that out of the video. How embarrassing. Um, that was not actually Kareem Hunt. This was Akeem Hunt. Hmm. You know, Akeem Hunt, compared to Kareem Hunt, they both kind of have the same running styles. They're both really shifty running backs and can do a lot after contact as well. They're really, really hard to get. A lot of running backs this week for the uh, Alliance had good weeks. Um, Akeem Hunt just... Stats, no lie, had more yards than any other running back this week and is definitely more deserving out of any other running back to win the honors of the first week's player of the week, racking up 75 total rushing yards for the Orlando Apollos. And this is not going to be the first time you hear me say the Apollos team on this list. Just wait. Now, as for the wide receiver player of the week, we are going to take Mikhail McKay. Wide receiver from the Commanders, five receptions, 80 yards. Um, you know, this league is all about opportunity. And if I have to go off of the tape out of anybody this week um, that I think would make an impact for an NFL team and I think would be a really good NFL player, first of all, I'd be taking Mikhail McKay. This guy has solid hands. It seems like everything that hits him in the hands, he's not going to drop. He's big. He's physical. He goes up. He goes and gets the football and he helps his team win he had one hell of a week for the commanders tallying up five receptions for 80 yards um he did not have a drop either i don't think which is very rare in this league so mckay might just be the best wide receiver in this league based off of just not having any drops because a lot of wide receivers this week had quite a bit of drops but mikhail mckay is one guy that i was tremendously pleasantly surprised uh to see how well he did play uh, for the Commanders, again, five receptions, 80 yards. He's definitely going to be Woodside's um, security blanket throughout this season. And I can't wait to see what else he does throughout the 10-week uh, season that the AAF has to offer. I also think that he's one of those guys that could make the jump 
to the NFL. There's always somebody looking for another reliable third, fourth wide receiver. I think by the time the NFL season starts, Mikhail McKay is definitely somebody to keep your eye on who might be on an NFL roster um, next season. Now, last and certainly not least, the quarterback of the week. Who is the offensive player of the week for the quarterback position? Was it ever any doubt? It's going to be John Wolford, quarterback for the hot shots, 275 yards and four touchdowns against the Salt Lake Stallions. Now, a reason why I think this was impressive is because I think the Stallions have a pretty good defense. I think that uh, a lot of the conditioning was the problem for this defense, and John Wolford ended up tearing them up. You know, he was hitting so many different wide receivers. He was making every throw he needed to make. He was using his legs when he had to. John Wolford was one of the most impressive players in week one for the Alliance. He definitely showed why he is going to be the quarterback for the hot shots. He won it, I believe, a week before the regular season even started. Uh, that is the starting job over Trevor Knight. Um, <clears throat> so John Wolford showing his ability and earning himself Week 1 Player of the Week honors for his tremendous game against the Stallions, a game in which the result was never in doubt. John Wolford had one hell of a game, and he definitely is more deserving than anybody to be one of the Offensive Players of the Week. Now we're going to be diving in on the Defensive Players of the Week. So just remember what I said. They don't have to be different positions for defense. If you're on defense, you ball, you get the call, and you get ranked. So, ladies and gentlemen, here are the three guys that I have came up with on the defensive side of the ball that I think had tremendous weeks. Starting things off with number three, we have a linebacker, Jonathan Massaqua, linebacker from the iron, racking up two sacks. One thing I have uh, noticed in this league is there's a lot of solid linebackers. Almost every team has their it linebacker, their linebacker that's a field general, can rush the passer as well, can pass cover, do anything. You know, the linebacker, the linebacking play in this league is something that I have been tremendously, tremendously impressed with, and I hope that that continues to go on as the season develops. And Jonathan Massacqua is one of those guys that I think is going to have a good season. I mean, obviously, racking up two sacks for the iron defense, the iron curtain, as someone commented on my power rankings, uh, the new the new thing that they're going to be calling this iron defense, and as they should, two sacks for Massaqua, and he looks like he's going to be a dominant linebacker in this league and part of one of the most dominant defenses in the league. So, a huge congratulations to Jonathan Massaqua for being the first player named to the Player of the Week uh, category, and he is from the iron again, two sacks. Coming in at number two, a guy who only had one sack for the Commanders, that would be Sean Washington. Now, you may be wondering, why is he ranked higher than Massaqua? He's not. <laughs> you know, these guys these guys are just guys that I think had tremendous weeks. This is not in any particular order. These are just who I think the three best players of the week were in the league. And I think Sean Washington, only, even though he only racked up one sack, he did have seven solo tackles as well for the Commanders. This guy was all over the field. And he looks like he's going to be a staple of this Commanders defense. Anytime, you know, there's a play on the field, you heard Sean Washington's name. Sean Washington looks like a leader of this organization and of this team, and that's great to see because a lot of teams are still trying to figure that out, mostly uh, the four teams that lost. But there's a couple of teams that won that are still trying to find their identity, and I think the Commanders are one of those teams. And I think defensively they found their identity in Sean Washington, a guy that I think is another guy that could go out and get himself an NFL contract by the time that the season is over. He had a tremendous game just controlling the field, making every tackle, making sure that the defense was aligned right. I was really impressed with Sean Washington's play for the Commanders. Now for the final, final Defensive Player of the Week. I think if I only had to name one guy Defensive Player of the Week, it would probably be this guy, Terrence Gravin, or Garvin. Terrence Garvin from the Orlando Apollos. He's a linebacker. He had two interceptions along with one pick six. The first pick six in the Alliance history. He had one hell of a game. He balled. He got the call. Um, whether that just be because the team they played is going to end up being really, really bad and they kind of gave it to him, or if this defense is going to be pretty stout, that is still yet to be decided. 
But without a doubt in my mind, you get two interceptions, you get one pick six in a league's first week, you are definitely the best overall defensive player from that week. And that is what Terrence Garvin was for the Apollos. A menace, two interceptions, one pick six, another linebacker. Like I said, the linebacking game in this game is going to be tremendous. It's going to be fast, fun to watch. There's a ton of good linebackers spread throughout the league. And you know who's looking for a linebacker? The Jacksonville Jaguars. We're looking for a linebacker. You know, we should be looking at any three of these guys to bring in, uh, you know, once April is wrapped up and we are looking to sign some more guys to the roster. Uh, Terrence Garvin has won one of the uh, Defensive Player of the Week spots along with proto along with uh, co-workers. I don't know why I was going to say protégés. <laughs> co-workers, I guess. Sean Washington, linebacker, commanders, and Jonathan Massaqua, linebacker for the Iron. Great linebacking play, and those are your Defensive Players of the Week for the Alliance. And that was the Offensive and Defensive Players of the Week for the AAF. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. Don't forget, you can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks as well. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel five days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. That was just Trey Facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you have a great day.